Welcome to Kaivos Training. In the previous session, you learned how data is processed for Kaivos semantic models. In this session, you will learn how to refine and optimize the created models. There are two ways to look at the semantic model, the physical view and the logical view. The logical view is more for the business users and the physical view is for the designers. When you are querying the model, what you see is the logical view of the model, and not the physical view. Let us look at how to improve the performance of the attributes which belong to a high cardinality dimension by splitting the dimension. Consider a scenario, where the overall dimension cardinality is 100k, there is one dimension d1 with two attributes a1 and a2. a1's cardinality 100k, and a 2's cardinality is 10. Whenever we want to use a2 in our reports, 100k records will be accessed to get these 10 values of a2. What we do now is split the dimension d1 into d11 and d12. d11 will have the attribute a1 and d12 will have a2. Now when we want to use a2 in our report, the query will search only 10 records and not 100k. This way, we are obtaining two dimensions, D11 and D12, and we are splitting A1 and D11 while retaining the same design. In the new dimension, we are shifting A2. Therefore, when you are query the A2 view, any queries that use it will include a search of 10 records out of 10. This will save time since the amount of time spent searching for 10 records will be very minimal compared to searching 100k records. This way, splitting the high cognitive dimension into two can improve query performance. Now let us investigate a scenario on lowering down the dimension cardinality. Let's say there are about 5 attributes in dimension D2 with a cardinality of 100k. Currently, I am querying for a1. Even though there are only 10 distinct values for it, I need to search for the 10 distinct records out of 100, which is impacting query performance significantly. However, when you split the dimensions into two, you can identify that a1, a2, and a3 will be queried together, and a4 and a5 will be queried together, creating some logical mapping. This will further reduce the number of combinations, thus improving query performance. Now let's consider the maximum value of these three combinations won't go beyond 200. And this combination won't exceed the value of 15. So, this will be the cardinality result after the model build is completed. And similarly, this is the cardinality after the model build is completed. For the demonstration I have taken the maximum value. Now keeping these scenarios in mind, we will be splitting up the dimensions. Let's open the logical design and the physical design. The physical design is the same as the logical design, but for demonstration purposes, we have kept it separate by using different models. We'll also be opening the models. Now, you can view that the physical view and expand the customer dimension. Now expanding the customer account. And from here, we can see that the customer dimension contains ship underscore to underscore ID and three attributes that were moved here, namely all underscore customers underscore ID total underscore market underscore desk, and account. Let's see the model build summary of this model. Click the build summary tab. You will see the customer dimension and ship underscore to underscore ID is 61. Now, this is the first scenario in which we have achieved high cardinality. Let's assume this is 610k. Now, in that case to serve this record you must read these 610k combinations to get different values. When querying for all customer IDs and total underscore market description in your view, it will be served using this dimension. 
However, searching from 610K records and retrieving these values would require searching through that number of records to generate the output. In physical design, we have split them. Click the Build tab. Go to Job Summary. Customer is the first dimension, and Customer Account is the second dimension. We have moved the account to the hierarchy levels because it has a higher cardinality. The cardinality is 24. We have counted the levels, which include the customer's total underscore markets description and either customer or customer ID at the attribute level. By querying this, we will now be accessing a lesser number of records to obtain the values of the total market underscore descriptions and all customers. Now you can see that there is a difference between the build summary of logical view and the physical view. Here you can see the build summary. The cardinality is 61. Here also 61. Whereas the logical design is the same for both the models. However, from the build summary, you can see that the model build is on the physical view and not on the logical view. Let's move to the query side. Adding one more report. Select Sales Design Physical Design Model. Now, you can see that there are only five dimensions on the query on the worksheet. When we expand the customer dimension, you can view all attributes under the customer dimension. On the physical design, you can view six dimensions design. In the reporting window, you can view five dimensions as per the logical view. The physical view of the model contains six dimensions. The customer account is added on the physical view. Kaivos internally identifies it need to get the response from customer account when you drag account field onto the physical view. Let's discuss the benefits of physical design. First, the reporting is not changed for the business users. For instance, when you run the model in the production environment, there are hundreds of business reports generated on the model. If you identify any delays in query responses when running them in the production environment, you may need to break down the customer dimension to improve query performance. However, adding a new dimension to the existing model design will lead to modifications in your business reports. In this case, you can use the logical and physical view to keep your reports intact without making modifications to the model design for the business. Additionally, this approach retains the business view of a particular dimension. Nonetheless, there are restrictions when using the logical and physical design views. We cannot split dimensions, such as time type, location type, or slowly changing dimension, SCD. You can only distribute the regular type of dimension. Another limitation is that we cannot move the hierarchy of one dimension to another dimension in order to split them. If you want to create a new dimension and need to move the existing hierarchy of a dimension to that new dimension, you will encounter restrictions in the physical view. Now, let's discuss optimization. What does it mean to optimize a design? The purpose is to enhance model build performance, improve query performance, and to save costs and time by utilizing resources efficiently. What should we optimize? There are two major areas to consider when building the model, its size and the time it takes to build the model. The size of the model can have a significant impact on cluster costs, so it is important to reduce it wherever possible. Additionally, Query performance is affected by the aggregates and the number of query engines in the system. Therefore, there is a relationship between query performance and model build size. We can reduce the size of the model by decreasing the level of aggregations, which may slightly affect query performance. However, this impact is manageable and preserves the query performance. 
we can optimize the model in such a way that it can meet our query SLAs and processing SLAs. We need to determine what needs to be optimized, which includes achieving a good query performance, striking a balance between query performance and model build size or time, and reducing the model build size. To optimize the design, we can follow certain steps. Firstly, we can consider design changes, such as splitting dimensions into two, to improve query performance. Also, we can use advanced properties to optimize the model. Optimizing the cluster resources By identifying the proper materialization levels and using cache to improve query performance. We can also tune the Kaivos cluster level properties. We can use the partition to improve the query performance. Additionally, we can restrict the data in the model by defining a sliding window. By using these steps, we can optimize the model. Now, let's discuss who can optimize. Users who are familiar with the business requirements need to have a clear understanding of the reports that should be generated, along with commonly used filters and grouping of attributes. Users who have knowledge of Kaivos must be acquainted with its properties and functionalities, including model views, physical or logical, partitioning, aggregation strategies, and other related features. Users who are knowledgeable about the system infrastructure should be aware of the resources that are available for building and querying the model. We will be discussing a few properties to optimize the Kaivos semantic model. There are a few Spark properties which we can configure to optimize the semantic model processing. The number of cores that a particular executor will use. The executor memory and the overhead memory will be used. The Spark uses heartbeat intervals to verify the executor's status. These properties have already been tuned after learning from several implementations. In case a discrepancy is identified, you can retune these parameters. To optimize the semantic model, you can use the aggregation strategy. You can define the type of aggregation strategy, such as expert or smart recommendation. So, if you're using the expert recommendation, you must have an understanding of the Kaivos properties. Let's discuss advanced properties. In the Refine tab, click on Advanced Properties. From there, you can view a list of grouped advanced properties and expand the group to select the specific property and set its required value. For instance, we have expanded the Spark Properties group. In this property group, you can do the following. Set the number of used cores to 4. Set the executor memory to 15 GB. Set the Spark driver memory to 5 GB. Set the executor memory overhead to 2 GB. The semantic model processing is currently using 17 GB of memory, with 15 GB allocated to executor memory and 2 GB allocated to overhead memory. The Spark driver utilizes driver memory to track all jobs executed on the Spark engine. The Spark.max executor parameter determines the maximum number of executors that can run at a particular instance. Here we will define the max executors. Let us set it at 20 for this job. We can increase or decrease this parameter in accordance with the availability of the resources for our cluster, the memory, and the number of cores. For instance, we can set a max executor of say 500, or 1000, or tens of thousands, depending on the resources available on the cluster. In this case, we are using a very small cluster size with only four nodes. Hence, we have dropped the max executor to 20. Let's move to the query execution section. This lists down the parameters that we can set for query execution process. Here we see the shuffle mode which helps us in shuffling the records amongst query engines to enhance performance during query execution. This can assume three values, never, auto, and always. 
If we set this value as never, all consolidations of the responses would be required to be accomplished at the BI server level, overwhelming it and reducing performance. Hence, to ease out the load, we can shuffle the records to delegate the job to the multiple query engines for consolidation by setting this mode on auto or always. By default, the shuffle mode is set to auto, where the query engine smartly decides whether to use shuffling or not. This mode is particularly useful for distinct count use cases. Now let's look at the query cache section. Here you can define the properties to set the query cache strategy, the type of cache, amount of cache, etc. The query result cache stores the query responses of the queries already executed on Kyvos. The cuboid cache strategy. This is used to define the usage of the query engine's main memory allocated for Kyvos semantic model. You can also use this property to allocate the main memory amongst multiple models. Now let's move to the aggregation strategy. Aggregation strategy helps in optimizing the models by reducing the processing time and size without significantly impacting the query performance. You can see there are two modes of aggregation, expert mode and smart mode. Let's understand these in detail. The expert mode is the user-driven or configuration-driven mode that allows you to tune your model performance by setting up some key materialization values in the pre-compute threshold level. It is a prerequisite for the designer to have a detailed understanding of the Kyvos properties to work in this mode. By default, aggregation mode is set to expert. Let us look at the properties that you can configure in expert mode. Selective dimension materialization lets you choose the dimensions you want to materialize in your model from the list of available dimensions. Let us drag customer location and product dimensions to the materialized dimension section. The resulting model will have a combination of records from these dimensions. Note that the dimension with the highest cardinality, in this case time, will always be materialized by default, whether selected or not. Here we are not materializing the channel dimension, but we will still be able to query this dimension using the aggregates created for the dimensions that are materialized. Now let's look at how we can change the dimensions for materialization. Right click on the product dimension and click on delete. Now drag the channel dimension to the materialization section to replace the product dimension. Click on apply. Once you have set the selective dimension materialization configuration, you can see the impact on the process time and size in the model process summary. Now let's look at the selective hierarchy materialization. You can use this property to change the materialization level of hierarchies. Here you can see the dimensions that consist of hierarchies. By default, all levels of hierarchies are pre-computed. However, users can choose the level of hierarchy for materialization of the models. Click on the drop-down field near the customer location dimension and select country. This will restrict the materialization for location till the country level. Similarly, we can set the hierarchy level materialization for the product and time dimension. Next is the degree of materialization which lets you define the degree of materialization on a scale of 1 to 10. Note that combinations that are not pre-aggregated during model processing will be computed during the query runtime. Let us now understand the smart mode. Smart mode is the system-driven mode that automatically generates materialization based on the queries and allows you to filter or analyze historical queries and work with data profile information. Click on the materialization level drop-down to set the materialization as high, medium, or low. You can also define the query patterns for materialization by clicking on the Actions menu and then selecting Set Query Patterns. You can see the available dimensions and their corresponding measures here. Set the pattern and click on Save. This marks the end of our session on refining semantic models in Kyvos. In the next session, 
we will understand how to run queries and generate reports in Kaivo's viz. Thank you.